night at Memorial Hermann Hospital. 17 year old male. Is Time is running out for a teenage crash victim. Is it hot here? Is it me? Now, trauma surgeon Alicia Mangrum races against the clock before the boy bleeds to death. My medical student says pray a lot. This was a family photo that was taken in a park here in Houston. The storybook life of a suburban mother of three in jeopardy. Mary Sharkey learns if her deadly tumor can be removed. I want it out. A dream come true for flight nurse Noelle Coes. Hey. When reality strikes, uh, okay, guys, I got code, code three, life and death. Although pediatrician Marnie Rose is doing well. I changed the little paper ones. She must battle a horrible side effect of her brain cancer. What the hell do you think you're doing? Ugly rumors. It's been a horrible ordeal to deal with. And I do it. I have to do it every week. And so do my parents every week. True stories. More blood, more blood, and let's tell the alarm. We're next. Real lives. Houston Medical. Okay, and you've had MRI before? A million. Okay. It's not really infection that Marnie fears. You know, I choose to be optimistic because I've been given every indication that things are optimistic for me. But the return of her cancer. The concept of going through a whole day without thinking of it is just, I can't even, it's just, I can't even think of it. I can't even con conceptualize that. Okay. I'm still surrounded with this white, though, um, which means either residual scar tissue, residual tumor, who knows. We'll never know unless we biopsy it. But that looks pretty nice and small. I like small. I think small is good. <laughs> small is good. It's not getting bigger. While I've got hope, I'm going to keep pushing and being positive and stuff. And I really do believe, I think, that people help make their own luck and help, help keep themselves going with their optimism. And there are miracles, and I don't know. <laughs> Oklahoma City, 1990. Just after midnight, construction workers spot a shoe in the road. And then, 70 yards beyond, the body of a young woman. She was still alive, but she was unconscious. She had been walking southbound along the East Service Road, when apparently she was hit by a vehicle. This was the point of impact where the car struck or impacted with the pedestrian. Police collect the woman's belongings, but find no ID. We had some batteries. We had some radio and headphones that she was wearing at the time. We had a shoe that was located in this lane. Suffering from severe head trauma, she lingers in the hospital overnight. The next morning, the woman's husband calls police, looking for her. Hello. They say, the more the merrier. But what if it's not just twins, but triplets, and even more? Today, the frustrations. I feel so sorry for your husband. He must be such an unlucky man. And fascinations of raising multiples. The best part is having two babies to love. Kyla, I just, she's little. I... Don't keep pushing him to catch up. Brazelton on Parenting. I remember a lot of things as a young child. I remember hearing about the Cotton Club and long black limousines streaking through 7th Avenue. Harlem was a magic place where all that was glorious, all that was possible, all that was golden about black people could happen and did. At Robbie Abalki, there was an emergency. Her name is Sharifa. A woman lost seven babies before. Sharifa Azim's family has rushed her from their mountain village. Sharifa's baby is in trouble. Its heart rate is low. 
The family fears Sharifa will lose this child. Of seven, all but one are dead. Last year, she gave birth to a child who lived for two months and two days. Six of her children died. Sharifa's mother, her husband's mother, and sister have come. Her husband, Akhtar, waits outside. He has with him a burial shroud.